Hi guys, welcome back. We are on our spree to be doing all the MCQs of SCMPE. Many of the questions that are there in MCQ are case study based. So every lecture of such questions is going to be 37 to 40 minutes. Okay, few of them I think we all have posted and few of them will be coming in the near future. On our YouTube channel, you will be finding a playlist of all such things. And every day we are releasing one video either of costing of CA Inter or FM of CA Inter or SCMPE. One MCQ daily, but I'm trying to cover everything in depth with explanation. So therefore, for you all, any twisted versions that ICA might be asking are also going to be there with us. Okay, so let us do this. So whatever we are about to be doing today, the theory of that was made by a gentleman called as Wilfredo Pareto. Now that guy used to look like this. I'm not concerned with his looks. Okay, very old. It's around 1906 that this theory came out. I think so. Uh, now, when this theory came out, it came out from a small thought that this gentleman had. And that thought was this. 80% of the output from a given situation or system is determined by 20% of the input. Now, this thought also came to him because he realized one thing that 80% uh, of the world's wealth is controlled by 20% of the people. So therefore, he realized this 80-20 rule. By the way, in your CA Inter, you had something called as ABC analysis, category A stock, category B, category C. Even that was part of Pareto analysis only. So this guy, he told that 80% of all the things are because of 20% reasons. So therefore, if you want to remove 80% of the things, you can try to remove this 20%. Automatically, 80% in this case will start to get resolved. Now, this thing later came to be known as Pareto analysis and Wilfredo Pareto always told that whatever theory I'm making, it's not only true like, you know, to the wealth that is there in the world, that 80% of the world's wealth is only there with 20% of people. He told is applicable to business also. And he started to apply this entire theory to many places in business. Example, one of the ways that you all can be applying it. You will notice this thing like, you know, I don't know how does it become true, but then it eventually becomes true. 80% of the entire revenue of any company or 80% of all the profits of any company only comes because of 20% of the products. So think that these products will become super important no, for the company. So therefore, Pareto analysis tells you what is important, what is not. 20% will give you 80% returns. So 80% of the revenue of the entire company only comes from 20% of the products. Think how true it is for a company like Apple. Think how true it is for a company like Samsung that 80% of entire revenue of Apple actually comes from 20% of their products that is basically iPhone. Okay. So somewhere or the other, this thing, no, it started to become very famous. One other application, 80% of all your profits only comes because of 20% of the customers. If you have a person who works in bank, he will tell you that, you know, a company, a bank might be having many customers. But there, 80% of the profit only comes from 20% of the customers. So therefore, these customers are super important for any bank. In my case, as a teacher, this is something that now I start to be realizing. 80% of all the doubts in the class are only asked by 20% of the students. All others keep quiet only. They don't ask any doubts. So... If I address, if I address these 20% of the students, automatically 80% of the doubt starts to get cleared. Now, in my personal life, this is how I try to be thinking about Pareto analysis. 80% of all the fights between me and my wife happen because of 20% reasons that why are you wearing your slippers inside? Why is your towel lying over here? So these are very small reasons, but they constitute around 80% of our fights. So therefore, if ever I try to clear these 20% reasons, 80% fights will automatically stop to happen. So this chapter was about many things, but one of the things that it was, was all about Pareto analysis. Pareto analysis is 80-20 rule. It tells you what is important, what is not. A company should concentrate on all those things which are important and top management should not much worry about the things which are not important. So therefore, it is kind of, say, the diminishing returns. 
try to focus on all those things which are most valuable because the things that are not valuable are not much useful to us okay based upon this thinking we are going to be continuing further just one last application that you all can also remember questions of that can be coming suppose there is a company who manufactures a products and there are a lot of defectives get produced a company will start to realize 80 percent of all the defects in a product will be due to 20% reason. So therefore, if a company can clear out those 20% reasons, no, 80% of all the defects will start to get removed. Let's do the question for today. So Pareto analysis is based on the law of four options, diminishing returns, B, variable returns, C, increasing returns and D, stable returns. I exactly asked you that particular thing, okay? Uh, whatever I gave the example of, but think of the correct answer, reply in the comments below. This is easy. So, answer I've already given before, but then I'll be seeing the answer once more. It is based upon the principle of diminishing returns. Because we try to be saying like, you know, that most important things are always at the top. Example, okay, just an example from very old times. There was a phone that Apple had launched that was called as iPhone 5 or iPhone 6. Okay, one of these two, I don't exactly remember. Now, both these phones or one of these two phones had one problem. If people put them in their back pocket, for a very prolonged period of time, they used to be bending, okay? It used to be called as a problem of bend gate. If you search on Google, you'll start to realize. And out of these two, one of the phones screen, okay, the display screen, stopped to function in approximately two years. Again, this was a problem that Apple never ever tried to recognize. They just corrected it. But what happens is that whenever, suppose anybody's phone become faulty, they all take it to a service center. And service center guys, they recognize the problem. The moment they try to find out the problem, the moment they recognize the problem, they send all these lists of the problems to the headquarters in America. And those guys try to sort all these problems in descending order. So automatically, like, you know, all those customers who have majority problems will start to be coming on top. They sort them in descending order. So suppose like, you know, one lakh customers had the problem of that the phone was getting bent. So therefore, one lakh rows will be filled up with one thing that the phone is bent, phone is bent, phone is bent. Then in that case, if 50,000 customers told this thing, like, you know, that the display has, has stopped to be working. So after one lakh, then all 50,000 will be coming up and so on. Okay. So therefore, with this, you will be starting to think which problem is most important. Sir, that problem is more important. Okay. Which if we solve, majority of the complaints will start to get resolved. So therefore, Bending of the phone is a most important problem. Once we solve this, then you go over to the next one. So after the first problem, second problem will give you lesser returns. Okay, because it is less in number. So out of the four, my bet in this case is for A answer. So therefore, it should be A, diminishing returns. That's the correct answer. I'm solving the MCQs for one purpose that before I leak out my answer, you all should comment in the video. What is the correct answer? Try to be doing that makes your job easier. So I'll see you all now in the next lecture. Take care. Bye.